of the high school physics project. Everybody's into golf these days. Kids are doing it. Old people are doing it. I'm even doing it. It's a lot of fun. And it's a lot of applied physics. We're going to take the range equation, and we're going to see how the different variables of golf fit that equation. Great. Hi, I'm Dr. Altman. I'm here at the Oswego Country Club on the 15th hole with OHS alumni from 1996, uh, William Weimer, who's uh, one of the pros here. And we're going to be talking about some of the variables associated with golf. In this video, we're going to illustrate the range equation. The range equation says that range is equal to the initial velocity of a projected object squared times the sine of 2 theta, where theta is the launching angle, divided by g, where g is the acceleration due to gravity on the planet. So we want to discuss the different variables, specifically if we know range, and we've got an idea of velocity, what kind of an angle would we need? Or if we had angle and velocity, what kind of range could we get? Or if we knew how far it traveled and the angle it was launched at, we could calculate the initial velocity. So let's discuss these variables. How would you know how far it is to that pin? You must take years and years of practice and just an incredible amount of just technical knowledge to know that information. Where would you find exactly how far you are from the pin? It was a trick question. I already knew the answer. If you look down, you'll notice that the yardage is marked on that sprinkler head. As a matter of fact, in golf, the range is a very important thing, but it's almost always given to you, or at least it's given to you so you can estimate it. There are th spikes out there in the field that tell you when you're 100 yards or 150, and, and when you start, it tells you exactly how far it is. Range tends to be one of the things you know. Now, uh, the two other variables we have to deal with, one is your, uh, what we call rotational angle, which is how your body turns. That should be pretty much the same regardless of whatever club you're using, right? Try to make one swing. One swing. So you got one swing, so this is your rotational angle, and that should be a constant. So we change the velocity by having these longer clubs or these shorter clubs. And uh, that, what do you call that, club head speed? Club head speed. Club head speed. And uh, we would call that tangential velocity. And so the tangential velocity is a function of your rotational velocity times the length of the lever arm. And uh, this is a pretty distinct difference here. Yeah, the, this here is at 45 and 3 quarter inches. And this one here is closer to about 34 and a half inches. Okay. So here's the variable we have all the control over. We practice, we get our rotational velocity, we get a longer club, we get a greater tangential velocity. Here we can see the different angles that the clubs can approach at. And this is a steep angle. Uh, can you tell me what angle this club is? That's a three iron at 21 degrees. Okay, this is 21 degrees. And uh, uh, for golfers, they have different numbers that represent the different angles. So this is a three and iron. And this is the real golf variable that comes uh, to golf. Which club to use? You determine your range. You've already practiced, so you've got an idea of how hard you can hit the ball, how fast you'll be going. You've got to decide which club to choose, and this is the thing you spend all your time agonizing about, buying all sorts of different clubs. But this is the one variable you control in golf. It's a very, very steep angle for a golf club. All right, that's great. So now the question becomes, what club do we pick? The range is equal to vi squared. Uh, times the sine of 2 times the club angle divided by g. Now g is the acceleration due to gravity on the Earth. and well, Let's assume you're going to be on the Earth. Now Alan Shepard did go to the moon in 1971 and hit a golf ball where the acceleration due to gravity was much smaller which meant that his range was much greater. Though uh, just to let you know he took three golf balls and he uh, he flubbed the first two. It wasn't until he got to the third one that he struck it well so don't feel bad when you mess up a stroke or two. At any rate, uh, so uh, we are standing at a certain point uh, on the range. We uh, are standing on the planet. We've practiced our swing, so we kind of know what we're capable of doing. And uh, that'll determine uh, what club angle we need. So if we go to the final part of this, range times g divided by vi squared 
take the inverse sine that's equal to 2 times the club angle and we divide this whole mess by 2 and that'll tell you what club you need to pick in order to do that. Now I understand that the average golfer isn't going to do any of that mathematics. However, if you take into account, you realize that velocity has the greatest impact on your range because the velocity is squared. So you'd really need to work on your swing. At any rate, if you do it right, like Mr. Weimer here, you can put all the pieces together. Of course, with any activity that involves physical dexterity, you got to practice. There's neural training, all sorts of other things, and we haven't even begun to get into all the other variables associated with golf, like ball speed and spin and all that kind of stuff. Well, thanks a lot. Golf is a lot of fun, and you can enjoy it. I want to thank uh, Mr. Weimer, also uh, Jonathan Fowler and the Oswego Country Club. Thanks a lot. Enjoy golf.